Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to be looking at AP Psychology Unit 2, Cognition. So today's lesson is going to be 2.1. We're going to go through the CED questions and any important information that you need to know for uh, 2.1. Let's keep going. Okay, so 2.1 is perception. Explain how internal and external factors influence perception. So we're going to have the key terms on a separate video like I always do. So we have a definition and an example of each one. This video here, we're just going to be looking at the CD questions and the essential knowledge you need to know for this particular part of the test. So before we get into the essential knowledge that goes with that particular CED question we just mentioned, we have to look at a few definitions just so that we understand what we're talking about. So we're going to start with the definition of perception. So perception is the process of organizing and interpreting sensory information to make sense of the environment. So the key concepts we under have to understand is that perception is influenced by both internal, cognitive, and external, sensory factors. Then we're going to look at bottom-up versus top-down processing. So bottom-up processing relies on external sensory information. So for example, recognizing a face by analyzing individual features. The top-down processing relies on internal expectations and prior knowledge. So for example, recognizing a face based on the context or past experience. The last one we're going to look at is schemas and perception. So schemas are cognitive frameworks that help organize and interpret information. So examples, stereotypes that affect our perception. When we think of schema, we think of things that we already know, those things that are already in our, our memories and things like that. So we're going to look at the perceptual sets, which is the expectations that shape our perception. So for example, if you're expecting to see a specific object in a familiar environment, then you might see that. Okay, so now we're going to look at the external factors, the context, experience, and culture. So basically, we understand that everything in our surrounding environment influences our perception, and our experience also influences what we expect to see. So past interac interactions shape those perceptions. And as far as culture, well, cultural background also affects how we perceive symbols, gestures, and even colors. So in this unit, we need to focus on Gestalt psychology. Gestalt psychology is a holistic approach of understanding human experience and fostering growth. It focuses on the interconnectedness of individual thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and environment. The Gestalt approach emphasizes the importance of the present moment, self-awareness, and taking responsibility for one's choices, dialogues, and actions. So by exploring this complex interplay between an individual's experience and their context, Gestalt offers a powerful framework for personal growth, healing, and transformation. Gestalt principles of perception are a set of rules proposed by Gestalt psychology, and they describe how humans naturally organize visual information into meaningful patterns or wholes. These principles explain how we perceive objects as part of a greater whole, rather than just a collection of individual components. The key principles include, so if you look at the, the screen here, we have a few. We're going to start with closure. Closure is filling in gaps to create a, com a complete whole object. Then we have figure and ground. This is distinguishing an object, the figure, from its background, ground. Proximity. Objects close to each other are, all, are perceived as a group. The next one, similarity. Objects that are similar are perceived as part of the same group. The next one, continuity. The mind flows, the, sorry, the mind follows continuous lines and patterns. And the last one, common fate. Objects moving in the same direction are perceived as a group. Let's start by talking about the interaction of sensation and perception. So we're going to click attention, selective attention, and inintentional blindness. So we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the selective attention and intentional blindness in more detail, but just, just to start, let's look at what is attention. That's the focused awareness on a particular stimulus while ignoring everything else. The selective attention, for example, this will be the cocktail party effect, which we're going to talk about, focuses on one conversation in a noisy room. And inintentional blindness is failing to notice something unexpected because your attention is so focused somewhere else. So let's start with the cocktail party effect. So the, this is the ability to focus on a single conversation in a noisy environment. It demonstrates a selective attention where the brain filters out any irrelevant stimuli. So imagine you're at a crowded party with the music playing and people are having conversations all around you, but despite all the background noise, you're able to focus and follow a conversation with the friend that's standing right next to you. However, as soon as someone across the room says your name, your attention shifts immediately, and then you hear your name really clearly, even though you weren't actively 
actively listening to that conversation. This illustrates the brain's ability to filter through background noise and selectively focus on information that you deem important, such as your name, while ignoring any other irrelevant stimuli. The cocktail party effect showcases how our brains prioritize auditory information based on relevance or personal significance. Now let's look at unintentional blindness. Missing visible objects when attention is directed somewhere else. For example, you know, failing to see the gorilla in the basketball in the basketball video where he's passing. This is a very um, common or popular video that a lot of your psychology teachers probably have actually showed in class. But you've got people passing the ball and then all of a sudden a gorilla pops up and nobody notices the gorilla. That comes to change blindness. It's failing to notice the changes in your environment. So not noticing when the person you're talking to is now replaced by another. A scenario illustrating an intentional blindness can involve a pedestrian walking down a busy street while focused on texting on their phone. And we never do that, right? As they approach a crosswalk, a cyclist quickly rides past them, narrowly avoiding a collision. Despite the cyclist passing very close by, the pedestrian fails to notice them because their attention was completely absorbed by their phone. This scenario highlights an intentional blindness, where the pedestrian's focus on their phone causes them to miss significant, potentially dangerous events happening right in front of them. Inattentional blindness occurs when we fail to notice something fully visible because our attention is directed elsewhere. So let's just do a little quick summary of the essential knowledge we covered for the first CED question 2.1, which as you remember was explain how internal and external factors influence perception. So perception is influenced by both internal and external factors. So we talked about bottom-up processing, which relies on sensory data, and we talked about top-down processing, which relies on expectations. We talked about schemas and perceptual sets that which guide our perception. We talked about context, experience, and culture, which shape how we perceive the world. We talked about the Gestalt principles, which explain how we organize visual information. And then we talked about how attention affects perception, leading to selective focus and possible blindness to other stimuli. Let's go on to the next CED question for this unit. So for 2.1 perception, there's a second CED question that the College Board's put out, and it's explain how visual perceptual processes produce correct or incorrect interpretations of stimuli. So let's go through the essential knowledge they want you to know for this particular question. So understanding visual perception. So we need to understand how our brain interprets sensory information to make sense of the world. So the depth cues, this perceptual constancies, and the movement perception. So we're going to start off by looking at binocular depth cues. So we're look at retinal disparity and convergence. Retinal disparity is the difference between the images seen by each eye and the brain uses this different, this, these differences to perceive the depth of what you're seeing. Convergence is when the brain merges the images from each eye to create a single 3D perception. Now we're going to look at monoc monocular depth cues. Okay, so we're going to look at relative clarity, relative size, texture gradient, linear perspective, and interposition. Let's start with relative clarity. That means the distance object that distant objects often appear hazier or more blurry. Relative size is larger objects appear closer. Texture gradient is the fine details are more visible up close. Linear perspective is the parallel lines seem to converge in the distance. And interposi uh, interposition, sorry, closer objects block the view of those behind them. And there's a few little um, images here on the slide that can help you with that. The next we're gonna look at perceptual constancies. We're gonna look at size constancy, shape constancy, and color constancy. Let's start with size constancy. This is the perception of an object's size remains the same even when the image size on the retina changes. Shape constancy is objects are perceived as maintaining the same shape even when viewed from different angles. And color constancy is the brain maintains the perception of consistent color under varying lighting conditions. Okay, so we're also going to talk about perceiving apparent movement. We're going to talk about the five phenomenon, and we're going to talk about stroboscopic movement. I do have a hard time saying that one. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so five phenomenon is when two adjacent lights blink on and off in succession, and we perceive them as movement. And then the other one, stroboscopic, <laughs> there you go, stroboscopic movement, rapidly flashing images give the illusion of motion. So for example, you know those little flip books we used to make in elementary school where we would draw the pictures and then we'd flip through? That would be an example of stroboscopic movement. 
next one and the last one we're going to look at is incorrect perceptions or we call them optical illusions so how visual cues can lead to incorrect interpretations resulting in optical illusions so there's two examples there's the Mueller liar illusion which is the line with the arrows or the Ponzo illusion which is the lines converging into distance they're all if you look at them differently and you look they probably did this in class actually with your teacher but you can see how they your eyes kind of fool you when you're looking at these which creates the optical illusion the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick summary of this last the second CED question that we just did we're going to talk about we talked about visual perception how that relies on complex processing to inter interpret depth constancy and movement we talked about perceptions can sometimes be incorrect which lead to illusions and we have to understand how these processes help explain how we interpret the visual world and that's all we need to know for 2.1 perception. According to the CED, there are two questions with essential knowledge. I broke those down for you. I'm going to do a separate video on the key terms with examples and definitions to help you. Also, you can see that find those on my channel. If you want to follow along with the full uh, slideshow, I do have that in my Teacher Pay Teacher Store. You'll find the link below and you'll have all the details there along with a little workbook that you can work along. There's some multiple choice questions. There's some you know short answer questions just to help you understand the information better. Um, thank you so much for listening today. Please like and subscribe my video if you'd like to hear more. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you next time.